right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is. Sports news time, and we're going to get right into it. First off, if you like the shirt, check it out the site. Uh, link is down in the description, Breeze Tees. But other than that, let's just get right into it. Marcus Morris is reconsidering his Spurs agreement for a one-year $15 million offer with the New York Knicks. Now, this is reported by Adrian Wojnarowski, obviously a GOAT. But um, free agent Marcus Morris, who committed to a two-year $20 million with the Spurs, with, with a second-year player option, obviously, is reconsidering because the Knicks have offered him $15 million for one year. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't like or a lot of people don't understand, but at the same time, I'm all for it. If you're a player and you commit to something, but somebody makes you a better offer, obviously you're not, you, when you're committing, you're not saying that I'm coming 100%. You're just saying that, hey, I like that offer and I would accept that. But that doesn't mean I have accepted it. It just means that that looks good to me. I'll go with it. But I'm completely free. The fact that I have not signed means that I'm completely free to go with somebody else. We saw this already a couple of years ago with DeAndre Jordan when Mark Cuban was like, this is your deal. And then Steve Ballmer was like, <laughs> he ain't signed yet. Hey, Chris, you and Blake, go get him. And they went and got him and they said, you know, they, they convinced him to come on back and he went back to the Clippers. And, uh, you know, as a result of that, Mark Cuban had told Wes Matthews who, who decided to sign with them because he thought DeAndre Jordan was coming. If he wanted to leave, then he could go somewhere else. And uh, Wes Matthews, he decided to stay and uh, the rest is history. But I'm all for stuff like this because as I always say, you are worth what someone is willing to pay you. That's, that's just the long and the short of it to me. If somebody's willing to pay you, $10 million a year, but then someone else comes along. And I say, that's good. I I'll take $10 million a year. I think we all would. But then someone else comes along and says, hey, here's $15 million for one year. And, with the and, and you know, we don't know what all the particulars are going to be, but he just did the simple math. Hey, 10 is less than 15. I'm going with the 15. And I know plenty of people who would be like, yeah, you know what? But look, I've also known plenty of people when we're in the job market, how many of you guys have done this? Because I know I have. I've gone out. I'm looking for a new job. I apply for several different jobs. The first job that calls me back, I commit to that job. And I'm like, okay, I'll be there on Monday. But prior to me starting, someone else calls back with a better offer. And they say, you know, instead of paying $15 an hour, there's a $20 an hour job. I'm going to take the $20 an hour job. It's just it's just that simple. 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever. We've all done that. And with the NBA, it's no different. We just look at it as different because they're making millions of dollars. But hey, the difference between 10 million and 15 million, it must be a lot. The thing is, we don't know if he was going to be a big part of what San Antonio wanted to do or if they just wanted to come off the bench. And perhaps New York is telling him, hey, you're going to have a bigger role here in New York, plus we're going to pay you bigger money. It is what it is. It's just one of those things where it's like we can all count. And I think that players should be free to do this. He's a free agent. And until he signs his name on the dotted line, he should have the right to decide where he wants to go. He hadn't signed yet, so I see no issue with this whatsoever. Up next, Kevin Durant's injury timeline and his free agent shenanigans. Yo, I read a report earlier today. It said that Kevin Durant committed to the Brooklyn Nets before the Brooklyn Nets even knew that he committed to him. And more or less what they were saying is he actually put it on Instagram or Twitter or what have you before he even met with them or even talked to him. It must be nice to be a superstar because if you're a superstar, you can do stuff like that. You can just say, hey, this is where I'm going. And he's worked his ass off and he deserves to be able to make decisions like that. Now, even though he's hurt and he didn't know that they were going to accept him, maybe he was just saying, hey, I'm going to the Nets and we can work out all the particulars later. But if he already knew that they were going to pay him the maximum and pay him the money that they were going to pay him, I don't see any issue with it. I mean, he just says, hey, Kyrie's going there. We know he and Kyrie are best friends for life. If Kyrie's going there, he was going there. He knew he was going there. And there was just no other reason to even sugarcoat it or try to hide it. He's just saying, hey, Nets, I want to be there. This is where I want to be. You guys make it happen. And like I said, the only thing that only thing about this that bothers me is that he said New York didn't make him a qualifying offer, which means that they didn't offer him the match. But then he and Kyrie took less money to play together. I got no problem with that, but it's just, you know, that's I think that's where the convoluted stories came out. Uh, but hey, it is what it is. When you're a superstar, you can do exactly what you want to do. You get to decide your fate. 
And if you're a player and you want to be able to decide your fate and you can't, maybe you should just get better. He's one of the best in the league. A lot of people think he is the best in the league. So, hey, I think plenty of players know where they're going way before the free agency deadline. He probably had already spoken with Kyrie, and they had already just talked about it, said, hey, Kyrie, where you going? He said, I'm going to Brooklyn, bro. He's like, hey, don't even worry about it. I'll be there too, as long as they pay me. And like I said, I couldn't have even blamed Brooklyn if they would have decided to pay him a little bit less for the first year and then give him more over the next few years, but hey, they decided to give him the max right off the bat because they wanted him and Kyrie to come there and play. Can't get mad at it. And like I said, if you're a superstar, you can do things like that. And if you're a player who wants to be able to do things like that and you feel like it's unfair, maybe you should just get better. Up next, we got a report from Chris Hayes who says the Lakers, Golden State, the New York Knicks, OKC, Detroit, Washington, Sacramento, Denver, Portland, Orlando, Atlanta, Minnesota, the LA Clippers were all in attendance along with 15 Euro League, uh, Euro League and Asian clubs. And they were all there to see Monte Ellis and Amari Stoudemire work out. I almost said Damon Stoudemire, man. It just shows y'all how old I am. But I think this is a good thing. Both of these guys are trying to get back into the NBA, but both of these guys are like north of 33. And so that's going to be something that's gonna be difficult. I know that at least three of these teams could use a player, especially like Monte Ellis. But if Amari Stoudemire is able to do anything like he was able to do earlier uh, in his career, I know nearly all of these teams could use him. I don't know if they're going to be able to get a contract or anything like that, but it's good to see that people came to see them working out because they want to know, hey, do these guys have anything left in the tank? But at the same time, it lets you know that we're always looking for good talent in the NBA. And if you can play, they will come and find you. It doesn't matter where you are, who you are, where you're playing. If you can play ball, they will come and find you. Kudos to those guys. I'm glad those teams went out there. Hey, Amari, we can use you in the A. I don't know if they're going to pick you up. Uh, like I said, I made a mistake in my video yesterday where they, they Datman has already gone to Sacramento. If they're going to give him $40 million for three seasons, more power to him. Like I said, a player deserves what anybody is willing to pay them. But, I mean, I, I, I knew we weren't going to give that to him in Atlanta. I don't know if they, they didn't think he was worth it or not. But, hey, it is what it is. Last but not least, rumors. The Cavs could get involved in a three-team trade with the Thunder and the Heat involving Russell Westbrook. Now, this right here, hey, look, this land, this the land shirt is dope. If you're a Cleveland fan and you want this the land shirt, you want me to make this for you, I can make that joint for you for $12, $15, something like that. Hit me up down low in the description. Hit me up on Instagram. You should be following me on Instagram anyway, or follow me on Twitter. And uh, you know, uh, I, I got you. But anyway. The Heat moved beyond the exploratory phase of Russell Westbrook trade. The Cleveland Cavaliers have been mentioned as a team that may be involved according to the source, which is the Miami Heat. This is the thing, the Miami Heat is the actual source that says that the Cavs are rumored to be in a three-team trade. This is gonna be something very interesting because I don't know how they're going to do this. Like I said, they have to make the money work dollar for dollar, but at the same time, because the Heat is up against the cap. But wouldn't it be something if somehow the Heat ended up with their own big three, and when I'm saying their own big three, if they ended up with Kevin Love, Jimmy Buckets, and Russell Westbrook, that would be crazy. I don't know if that, I don't think that would make them the favorites to come out of the East, but it definitely makes them more competitive, especially when Kevin Love, I don't know if he's gonna take a super back seat because when you got Russell Westbrook leading the charge, you have Kevin Love on the wing or sitting in the corner waiting to shoot the ball, you got Jimmy Buckets on the wing, Neither one of those guys really, really, really need the ball in order to be effective. But at the same time, I'm going to be optimistic and say that he's going to scale it back, get his teams involved, and he realizes that the way that he's been playing the last three seasons, getting triple doubles out the wazoo, it's just not, that ain't it, boss. That's not how you're going to win games. You'll win a ton of games in the regular season, and you'll get to the playoffs, but you are not going to win an NBA title or even come close to it playing like that. Perhaps he sees that at this point, and perhaps he's going to make the change, and hopefully he can, uh, you know, they can be something. But with that being said, I, I really don't see it happening because, like we said, Miami's up against the cap. Uh, the Thunder's trying to get butt naked, and I, I really don't know how that would work 
Maybe they'll do a three-team trade. Maybe they can do a signing trade or something like that. Maybe they're going to send them over there, and then they're going to cut them, and then they'll get signed or something. I have no idea how they're going to make this money work. I'm not even going to pretend to know how they're going to make this money work. And obviously, there are rumors that J.R. Smith, some kind of how, is going to try to finagle his way to get to the Lakers. So maybe this could be something like that. I have no clue. But uh, the article, it just speculates. It just says, you know, Whenever the Cavs mention a trade, obviously Kevin Love and J.R. Smith are the two players that come to mind instantly. And, uh, you know, I, I really don't know, man. We, we really don't know how this is going to come up. And obviously they say, hey, Dean Wade with a two-year contract to the Cavs. D. Wade signed it back with the Cavs. Anyway, you guys let me know. How do you think this thing is going to work out? Do you think Russell Westbrook is going to the Heat? I think it's a foregone conclusion right now that he's going to get to the Heat some kind of how. We just don't know how it's going to happen. But I would guess if not before the beginning of the season, maybe two or three games in, maybe two or three months in, he's going to find his way to the Heat and uh, he'll be there. It'll probably be better for them to do it before the season even begins because obviously you have way more flexibility right now. But um, could you see a scenario where Kevin Love, Russell Westbrook, and Jimmy Buckets are on the same team with that young, with a young nucleus down there in Miami. I mean, it would be interesting to watch. Again, I still don't know if that gets you past the Milwaukee Bucks because you have to play defense if you want to get past the Bucks. And I just don't know if that's going to happen. And the Bucks also signed George, George Hill back uh, to the fold. So, you know, it's going to be rough. Anyway, I got to get up out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave me a like. If you like the video, subscribe for more daily NBA content. And I'm out of here. Till next time. It's your boy Jay Easy, aka Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Hello!